Hi, welcome to today's webinar on a semantic SEO. I'm Mateusz and at Senuto I'm video content manager, manager. And today with me is Damian Sałkowski, our Hi, CEO, our, our CEO, but also expert SEO with a years of knowledge. Hi Damian. Hi, hi Mateusz. I'm glad to be here with you guys. And we also have a partner of today's webinar and our partner is WhitePress. WhitePress is a content marketing and influencer platform where you can buy sponsored uh, articles in, in any web page in basically Europe and in the whole world, but also you can cooperate with influencers also around the world. And I think uh, today's webinar will take uh, time about one hour. And let's start. Okay, so I will share my screen and we'll start with the presentation. We'll have the theoretical part, which will take about 30 minutes and then we'll go to practice. Let me know, Mateusz, when I can start. Everything's fine, you can start. Okay, so in today's webinar, we'll show you how to achieve high rankings in search results in 2022 using methodology of semantic SEO. But first, start with the agenda. We will first learn about Google Path to Semantic Search. Its history is crucial in terms to, for understanding semantic SEO. Next, you will learn concept exist in semantic SEO. Later, we will tell you ourselves about the myths in semantic SEO. Then we will talk about the future of semantic SEO. And finally, we will show you how we deal with semantic SEO at Senuto in our tool, in our platform. Okay, so uh, what is semantic search engine? Semantic search eng engine is an one of that, understand the meaning, intent, and context of user's query. And Google is a kind of semantic search engine, of, of course. Mm, but the, there is no single strict definition of semantic SEO. You will uh, read a slightly different definition on each study. On that I use uh, usually use is semantic SEO is a way of conducting SEO activities that focuses on understanding user intent and aims to fully satisfy this is done by providing all the answers the user may be looking for in the content in the form in which they are looking for them. Semantic SEO focuses on a holistic, which means end-to-end -end approach to optimizing process content and information. This is the definition. I'll go um, to the details, but first uh, we need to understand the history of Google, which, um, uh, which lead Google's to semantic search engine. Google was founded in 1998 and until 2030, uh, we could classify it as, as lexical search engine. After, 2000, after 2030, it became a semantic search engine. And what, what are the differences between lexical search engine and semantic search engine? Lexical search engine does not understand the purpose of the queries connect queries to the documents based on occurrences of the query in the document, which we know in cell, uh, as a keyword stuffing. The keyword must appear in the body of the document. And also lexical search engine does not take user intent into account. Example, a product page may be displayed to the query. How do I choose a bag? Uh, and differences between lexical and semantic search engine is that S semantic search engine attempts to understand the purpose of the query, connect the query documents based on semantic analysis. The keyword does not have to appear in the document and also place, places the user intent first and seeks to understand that. Um, and I will now explain you the various important steps of Google to semantic search engine. Underst understanding the, them will give you a better understanding of the principles that guide today's search engine. So, first step was in uh, 2011 uh, when Google um, when Google uh, provide a schema org standard. We know schema org uh, by like additional features in search results like opinions or ratings or many other uh, kinds kinds of additional information um, and. What we know about the structured, structured data uh, schema org standard, it's, it was a joint in, uh, initiative by Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Uh, there are 792 types of information that we can provide by the standard. And also more than 10 million pages used schema org standard to structure the data. Uh, and 
why why was the introduction of schema org in 2011 was so crucial because in 2011 uh, nlp natural language processing model were not developed structuring the information uh, on a content basis was basically impossible so which schema or google gains access to structured information uh, and describe it information so it's it was very important uh, the second step uh, to semantic engine uh, was that google announced the introduction to google graph and we know um, and from that day google began be, began communicate search queries as a things not strings which means that queries are not longer uh, impro uh, are not longer strings but described objects and uh, in today's SERPs re uh, results, we know uh, knowledge graph as additional information from the right side of the uh, of the SERP. So for example, if I type Eiffel Tower in Google, I uh, Google understand that is a building that is located in Paris, in France, and many additional information. Uh, before knowledge graph, if you uh, type Eiffel Tower, Google uh, will look for pages that contain this word and show it uh, show it to user but uh, uh, th there was no additional information about the query and in two uh, 2012 the graph had 500 million places and more than uh, three and a half billion facts uh, the knowledge graph has changed the look of search results as I show you uh, on the previous slide there there is additional information for example about the Eiffel Tower and also Google is beginning to understand the meaning of a query. It's just the beginning of, of, of that process. And the, the revolution was, was taken to 1213 where when Google, um, when Google provide Hummingbird uh, update. Uh, and as Google said, that was the biggest change to the algorithm science 2001 and impacted more than 90% of search results. Unlike Panda or Peng Penguin, like the algorithm every CEOs know, this was a change to the mine algorithm. And also it was the beginning of Semantica CEO as we know, uh, as we know it today. And uh, Hummingbird have the biggest impact uh, was on local results and also uh, from that day, Google start of development of NLP models that better uh, to better understand the intent of the query. The next step was Panda update, Panda uh, for uh, four point uh, which uh, take place in tw twenty fourteen. And according to Google, in concert uh, spam like previous versions. Uh, Panda 4.0 introduced the concept of topical authority. From that day, CEOs start to use that term uh, in terms of, of the definition of topical authority. And the next step was Rank Brain, which should take place in 1215. Uh, um, and Rank Brain is the first unsupervised, unsupervised uh, artificial intelligence of Google. And uh, it allowed Google to better understanding of new queries that uh, that was never exist. And also Rank Brain, anal uh, it was start of analysis of user behavior, like do not be confused with behavioral factors. Uh, and among other things that thanks to our rank brain, our website can be uh, high on keywords that are not in the content. If uh, one URL can be visible on thousands of keywords, if the intention of the keywords is the same. For example, if you type black console by Sony in Google, uh, you can see that Google know that, that we, we, we mean uh, PS5 and we don't provide the PS5 uh, in our query. Uh, next step was in 2018, uh, and uh, Google um, announced neural matching. And as Google uh, said, it was super synonym dictionary using neural networks. Uh, as Google said, uh, neural matching impacts around 30% of queries, mainly those where the intention is what uh, is not clear. Uh, and also neural matching matched results to the query base, uh, based on document analysis, ignoring other algorithm factors. After the introduction, uh, the SOA ind uh, industry thought that uh, it was the end of the links, but uh, it, was, it wasn't true because 
uh, neural matching acts as a complementary mechanism in the area of results that are already high up. So you need to be high in search results to, to, be, uh, to be analyzed by neural matching. And for example, if you type, why does my look TV look strange? Google know, uh, thanks to neural matching, that uh, you mean uh, opera effect, soap opera effect. So when, you, when your uh, TV looks strange, uh, it, we call this, this effect soap opera effect. You, you, you may be confused about the differences between neural magic and rank brain. So Google describe it like that. Rank brain allow uh, the search engine to link term to pages. So it more focus on relation between queries and, and web documents, for example, like in PlayStation example. And neural matching allow uh, the search engine to link words to terms. So it, it more, like I said before, it was something like super synonym, synonymous dictionary. And example of the use is soap of her example. Uh, the next step uh, to semantic search engine was BERT, uh, which took place in 2019. And BERT is a bi-directional language model. Uh, and also it, will, it is self-learning model. And also it can be trained, trained for different tasks like sentiment analysis, for example. Uh, in the past, Google used models such as uh, word to vec which used vector analysis to examine the distance between words, as Google could link farces such a kind queen. In contrast, in such a model, each word uh, was a separate vector. Their order in the sentence had no meaning, so uh, Google not to fill the gap, and that's why uh, Bert uh, come, to, come to the ground. Mm, for example, if you type 2090 Brazil travel to USA. USA need a visa. Before BERT, Google doesn't uh, doesn't know if if you uh, if you want to ask about Brazilian travel of USA travel. But BERT uh, BERT allow Google to understand that and show the uh, show the correct result. Uh, and this is the this is the changes that uh, lead us to today's search engine, which we uh, which we as said defi de define it like semantic search engine. And there is a few terms in semantic SEO that you should know and should understand. To um, the first is user intent, which I think you uh, hear a lot in few last months or a uh, few last years. So uh, we have a de definition from Google, uh, from, uh, from the document for search quality team. So Google defined user intent as like that. When a user types a, or dictates a query, uh, they, are type, they are trying to achieve a goal. We refer to this goal as intention. So if you provide some, some query, Google try to understand what your goal is and, uh, and try to answer to your intention. And also on the same document, uh, the search quality team document, Google have uh, provided some types of intentions. Intention, sorry. The first type is no or no simple. In the case of no intention, the search engine user wants to expand his or her knowledge or certain topic uh, by typing, uh, for example, in an uh, Eminem. In the case of the no simple intention, the user is interested in simple in information on a topic or fact. For example, how old is an Eminem? The second type of intention is do. And uh, if user have that intention, um, user means that user want to do something, for example, downloading a game or buying something. We have also type website. This is the na navigation intention. And when user uh, have that intention, for example, uh, they want to go to some website, for example, they type Facebook. And we also have type visit in person. A user with this intention want to visit a place in person. For example, uh, this user will type ch Chinese rest restaurants. And there is four types of intention that Google provide on this document. And also uh, Google on this document tell us how they, uh, how they um, find out what your, what your intention is. Uh, the first, uh, the first uh, the fir Google use uh, user language and location. Uh, Google use demographic profile. profile. You, don't you don't have to be logged in in Google. Google like know your demographic profile on your uh, on your activities on the web. Uh, 
and also information from previous queries and behavioral factors at search engine level. And also we have uh, different kind of types of intentions that Google provide on the document. Uh, Google um, Google try to understand uh, if the dominant interpretation, what most people mean when they type a given query. Not all queries have a doc dominant interpretation. Also, uh, there are common interpretation. What a significant proportion of users have in mind. A query can have a common many common interpretation uh, interpretations. Sorry, and also Google uh, tell us about minor interpretation. What a small number of users have in mind. And here we have an example. If we have a query Mercury and locate uh, locate uh, English US, uh, the common interpretation for that query is planet and chemical element, and the minor is uh, car brand, insurance company, and bond, boat engine company. And we, if we analyze uh, search results for this query, we'll see that on the top of the search results, we will have results about the planet. Four uh, from 10 results are about the planet. We have also common interpretation where people, uh, where, where people ask about chemical, chemical element and two from 10 results are about the chemical element. And also we have minor interpretations like, uh, like Google show, uh, show above that it can be uh, both engine company or insurance company, and both of the results have one uh, from 10 results. So like uh, SERP is uh, divided for section for dominant interpretation, for common interpretation, and also for minor interpretations. And also intent can change uh, on time. If user type uh, George Bush in uh, 1994, uh, they are looking for 41 uh, pres president of United States. If they type the same query in 2004, uh, they they ask about 33 uh, president of the USA. Also, if uh, if we type iPhone in 2007, uh, we mean iPhone one, and we type the same query in 2014, we mean iPhone six. And how does Google satisfy intentions? For uh, first step is a snippets. There are uh, more than uh, 1,500 SERPs configuration right now in Google. So if I mean snippets, it's a local pack, it's knowledge graph, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, Google uh, is trying to be answer engine. engine. If you, for example, ask about uh, how, old, how old is Eminem, Google try to provide uh, answer directly in the search engine. Uh, and what impact does this, does this have on SEO? So the first uh, and the most important fact is that if you don't match intent, there is no, pos there is no uh, uh, you, you cannot have a position in top 10. So if, for example, you try to rank uh, for a keyword, how old is Eminem with the article about his, I, I don't know, songs, you, you cannot be uh, in the top 10 no more. Uh, correct intention ma uh, match. So if you uh, uh, if you meet the uh, intention with your content or your or your web page, uh, you can rank for thousands of keywords for a single URL if the if these keywords uh, have the same intention. And intent is not just a sub page type. You need to look deeper. So it doesn't mean if you like, for example, trying to rank for keyword. Um, I don't know, uh, bike, it doesn't mean you have to provide a category page. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to also provide some additional information what, what user expect from you, like table, like prices, like any other things that, that Google can check. And the result, results from fragmented intention can change, so you need to react. So as I, as I show you above, like intention can change, so you have to also change your content, change your, change your web, web page according to that. The second term in semantic SEO is entities, uh, and I'm mm, sure that you he hear about that before. And also Google described entities uh, as a thing or concept that is unique, well-defined, and distingu uh, distinguishable. And uh, Google, from, from that day that they provide knowledge graph, they start talking about the strings, uh, things not strings, and also, as you can as you can see on Google Knowledge Graph API, which uh, which I screenshot right here, every 
uh, entity, like entity is, for example, Robert Lewandowski is a best Polish football player, have unique ID like M slash uh, 03C2X. Uh, and this is a thing indexed in database and Google, uh, Google know uh, and describe this thing. And this is unique because it's Robert Lewandowski. There is only uh, one Robert Lewandowski, which is Polish football player. And Google uh, also have many other informations about, uh, about Robert. And also uh, we can check the um, user intent on the Knowledge Graph API. For example, if I put only Lewandowski, so uh, the surname of Robert, uh, the dominant interpretation is Robert Lewandowski, which is food, Polish football player. And the result score for that is 1,241, so very high. And the minor interpretation, if someone uh, put Lewandowski, is Mariusz Lewandowski, is another Polish football player, but the result score is only 72. So, for example, if you try to rank for keyword Lewandowski with, with web page about Mariusz Lewandowski, it's like impossible because the dominant interpretation is Robert Lewandowski and most results is about him. Everything is fine? Yes. Uh, because you look at me. <laughs> okay. Um, and semantic CEO is all about relationships. By organizing information into entities and their characteristic, Google is able to explore the relationship between individual entities. So for example, if uh, we have entity Tom Hanks. We also know that he act in uh, Larry, Larry Crown uh, and also uh, he act in drama and we know that he, he, uh, he has profession actor and actor is type of the entity actor is a profession and that's how knowledge graph look like. And also Google have a pat has a patent that describe how entities are organized. Uh, this patent name Viperpedia. Within the, within the patent, we get description of how new entities are created and how they are stored. So uh, in the in the uh, slide uh, in the below, you will you will see a link which uh, which will uh, uh, to to the patent and. For example, if we have uh, uh, information organized in Viperpedia, we have attributes like capital, which have classes like countries and also type, atomic, textual. Uh, we have uh, attribute is uh, attached to, um, to types. So a uh, type of attribute capital is location. Also uh, there is synonymous, misspells, superlations and uh, and source of the of the entities for example query streams text and freebase and uh, how google uh, recognizes entities and where is the source of the entities the first source is freebase this is the old uh, database of entities that google used before i don't know 2017 uh, i i guess there is that query stream so mm, most of the entities come from user queries Google analyze the queries and then decide which uh, which uh, part of the query is entity. And also uh, from analyze the web documents. <clears throat> from web documents, all, Google also extract candidate for attributes and entities. And then, uh, then uh, everything is merged. And then uh, Google use various techniques of NLPs and then the entities is indexed to Beeperpedia. So here we have a screenshot from this patent. And uh, on this screenshot, we'll see how Google, uh, how Google uh, decide uh, what is entity in query uh, stream. So uh, Google on this technique, take the entities from, uh, Google, from users uh, queries. So Google know that uh, people, there is 3 million queries about United States and population. Then Google categorize the uh, then Google have ID USA and the class of the USA also is a population. Also Sweden have the same class population that have less queries, but also 1 million. And then Google also attached the population to other classes like countries, like Scandinavian countries and so on and so on. That's, that's how Google, uh, that's how Google uh, extract the entities from query stream. And, uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to entity based uh, entity based uh, extracting from extracted from web uh, content, Google use a process uh, NLP technique that called distance supervision. 
in addition to this model, Google use a number of NLP techniques, which is described more in, in details uh, on the patent. And thanks to that, like if you, uh, when you type Robert Lewandowski, Google know that the, uh, the connections between Robert Lewandowski and the other uh, football players like Thomas Miller, Chikarin Bezema, and that's why you see the, uh, the C, uh, see the like common, common search results. And also you can test how Google see entities on Google NLP API, which is free. Uh, if you want to use it more, it's, it's, like it's uh, it's paid, but but it's it's quite cheap. Uh, you have a link here. So if I provide Google a uh, text, it's a text from Wikipedia about Robert Lewandowski. Uh, all the colors are entities that Google recognize. So so that's how Google see uh, see a web document uh, in terms of entities. And there is also other possibilities for NER. It's uh, name entity recognition. <clears throat> there is a textrazor.com, which is paid service, and Spacey, a free library for Python. And also there is a, there, uh, there is a community hugging face, which provides you various models on different uh, languages and different uh, libraries. So uh, entities means that understanding entities increase uh, uh, number of structured information in a uh, SERP result. So when Google start to recognize uh, things not string, we can see more uh, structured information in Google, like I, uh, I show you before on Eiffel Tower example. Uh, Google also can understand facts through a large set of attributes. So like Google start to understand what is fake information, and what, what is fa uh, fact, and what, uh, what is opinion. Mm, improve understanding on longer queries. So thanks to entities, Google better understand the longer queries. Uh, it's very important in terms of voice search, where we, uh, where we, where the query is quite long. The next term is topical authority. <clears throat> so uh, there is also no uh, strict definition about uh, about topical authority, but in February 2021, John Miller said something like that in one of the, his tweets. When we want to rank for a specific topic on Google, it is a good practice to also cover related topics. For example, if we sell laptops, when we want to rank for that, it is useful to create posts like reviewing laptops, the introduction of the best new laptops, those kind of things. And it's useful then, uh, doesn't have to be done in a, spe in a special way. So uh, if we try to analyze what, uh, what John did say, uh, if we want to be uh, highly ranked in Google for a specific topic, it is worth describing rating topic as well. So for example, if we want to rank for Eminem, uh, it is worth describing also other uh, musicians, other rappers. By doing so, uh, you build a reputation for knowledge in a particular area. area. It, it is topical authority. So if you describe Eminem, mm, I don't know, uh, other, uh, other rappers, you will have a reputation for knowledge <coughs> in the uh, rappers area or mus musician area. Uh, and also users with more context gain confidence Google too. So if if you have more articles about a specific topic, users um, have more trust in you and also Google have the same approach. And also this approach allows Google to narrow down the search area for queries with less specific intent. So if like Google, like the query have no specific intent, Thanks to topical authority, Google can choose the topic, uh, uh, topical authority uh, website on specific topic. And we uh, um, we make a test how important is topical authority, and we use uh, two hundred to, to more than two hundred k keywords in that uh, uh, in that test. Uh, we divide these keywords into in, into 7,200 semantic groups. And also I examine how many words from a semantics groups are covered in their content by URLs ranked in top 10 for specific semantic group. And I adopted a scale from one to 100 uh, where, where one is low topical uh, authority and 100 is high topical uh, authority. 
And as you can see on the on the chart, average topical authority of sites uh, in each search results position for the position one is more than uh, more than 55, and it's go down for each positions. And the correlation between high topical authority and high position in search results is 0 0.69, which means there is a, a significant correlation between this, uh, these two factors. And also, uh, what is uh, what else is worth knowing in terms of semantic SEO? Uh, there is few techniques that Google used to uh, uh, to analyze the websites, to analyze the content. And uh, right now, I want to show you these techniques. So, first technique is a evaluation of the comprehensiveness of information. So, Google have special Google have special patent for. Uh, to analyze the um, uh, comprehensiveness of information. And uh, what we can read on the patent is techniques are described herein for determining an information gain score. So Google, for each web document, calculate a gain score, uh, which try to, which try to uh, represent the unique information that the web content provide to user. So what it means for SEO, you should just don't focus on reverse engineering. If you want to rank for a specific keyword, don't try just to uh, reproduce what you what you see in top 10. Search volume zero is your friend because most of the CEOs uh, skip the keywords that have search volume zero. But um, if you uh, describe these keywords, it can be some unique information and Google uh, give you uh, a better score. And also, you should revisit old content and provide information about new keywords, new facts, and new entities. It is also can uh, can um, can make higher your uh, your gain score. The next the next important thing uh, about a semantic SEO is information architecture and internal linking. And semantic SEO has two aims: ontology. So ontology is describing contents with uh, with as many attributes as possible in a simple uh, in a simple as form as possible. So you should uh, uh, the first aim is to describe the whole concept in uh, most simple possible way. The second aim is taxonomy. So arranging uh, arranging them. Mm, uh, in service structure. So first, you should describe the whole uh, uh, whole concept, and then you should uh, you should create a good service structure for for the ontology. And how to organize on informa uh, information on the site? First of all, you need to create topic clusters, so semantically co uh, cover covering content. For example, an article on semantic SEO and an article about internal linking. Then you need to create pillar pages. According to this technique, we should have an article that covers a topic in a very complex way and multiple articles supporting it within uh, additional information. And uh, I prepared before uh, example structure that you, can, that you can create on your website. Of course, you should have more articles and more categories, but it's, it is just representation. So we have a pillar page about SEO, then we should create cluster uh, of level one of articles. So if we have uh, a pillar page about SEO, we should provide a very uh, detailed, detail about, a detailed article about SEO and different techniques. In cluster level one, we should uh, create article about technical SEO and also provide as many information as possible. Then we can create cluster about Google Algo updates and about SEO at all. And cluster level two, it's a detailed um, uh, articles about specific topic. For example, in technical SEO cluster, we have an article about Core Web Vitals, and uh, and this is the, and this is uh, like last article on, on on the website architecture, and also I show you how you can make internal links uh, between the articles. It's also very important. Internal links is also uh, important factor for a semantic SEO. So you can uh, link between uh, clusters. You can also link between articles within uh, the same cluster. Uh, we will send the presentation after the webinar so you can see how it's how it's built. 
the next technique is updating content within Semantic SEO with Semantic SEO. So also Google have a patent uh, about this topic. So uh, Google described that uh, have a system may uh, measure how the content of a document change over time and also generate a score for the document based at least in a part on the measure of how the docu how the content of the document change over time and rank the documents with regard to at least uh, on other documents base at least in part of the score. So Google mm, analyze how much the document change and how uh, uh, how often the document change. So many times uh, I have a question: if I change on the date, Google uh, Google will uh, make my position higher. No, Google also try to uh, try to analyze how much of the content uh, in the document change. And here you, here you have uh, described the formula for uh, for this score. Okay, if we talk if we talk about content update, sources that are updated more frequently can gain position in search results. So you should focus on uh, on uh, updates. Uh, the more content you add, the higher your scoring will be. So if we uh, if Google analyzes your domain, if you co create new content on regular regular, uh, for example, weekly, uh, it can give you a higher scoring. Okay, the next part is uh, myths in the area of semantic SEO. There is few few of them. First of uh, which, which I think is a myth, is the length of a content uh, is important. And also we make uh, we make a test. We use uh, two hundred thousand keywords on that test and sixty six thousand unique domains, and we try to uh, try to. Um, and we uh, and we measure the content length for each URL, and here you see average content length uh, for each position in search result, uh, and the correlation between uh, content length and position in search results is zero point zero eight. So there is no significant uh, evidence that uh, the correlation between these two factors exists. So it means that. There is no evidence, and for some intentions, like long content, may be uh, may be advisable. Otherwise, we are not able to describe uh, all the attributes. So you should, uh, for example, if we come back to the structure uh, of the uh, of the of the service, uh, if we try to rank for keyword SEO, it means that you should. Uh, you should probably provide long article because there is many aspect of SEO that you should describe. If you want to describe every every entity and every attributes and class of the entity uh, that is connected to SEO, you should the article needs to be uh, needs to be uh, longer. But if you write article about Core Web Vitals, this article should be should have uh, should be should be short as possible. Okay, come back to the presentation. Okay, the the next myth is uh, LSE keywords, and most many of CEOs said that LSE keywords are important for SEO. For and which means that if we are writing about uh, weightlifting, then we should use the words like gym, weight loss, personal trainer, and John Miller uh, tweet about that, and he said that there is no such thing as LSE keywords. Anyone who telling you otherwise is make is mistaken. Sorry, and why uh, why I think that LSE keywords is a myth because it's a very old technique from 1918, so over 30, 13 years old. And as you probably know, Google have very uh, very high tech NLP techniques to to analyze the keywords and and web documents, and it's a very simple NLP technique. And many people confuse LSE with semantically re related keywords. So, like, if someone tried to tell you about LSE keywords, in most cases, he he means that he mean he he, he means semantically related keywords, not LSE keywords. Of, okay, and uh, this is about the theoretical part of the semantic SEO. Now let's go to practice, and I prepare ten things that you should uh, think about in terms of semantic SEO. So first thing is change your thinking about keywords. Uh, don't focus on long tail. 
<clears throat> single intern keywords are clustered. Within, a unit, within one URL, you can rank for thousands of keywords. So like there is no sense uh, in nowadays to focus on long-tail keywords. You should um, focus on providing um, a good uh, detailed information about entity classes and attributes. Focus on ontology and taxonomy. And also Google is supposed to understand the content and structure of a page through entities and their attributes, not, not keywords anymore. So that's why you should focus on, on them. Uh, the second, uh, uh, the second is maintain a log logical structure of the content. So the the most important content should be above the fold. The most important information at the top. Each heading uh, sh should be provide a different topic. There is also patent from Google about heading vectors and how Google reading the headings of the web documents. So you can you, you should write it and and uh, and understand why each heading should provide a different topic. Uh, fill in the knowledge gaps. Uh, as I told you before, don't just focus on popular keywords. Z zero search volume keywords also your friend. Provide new knowledge. Google have a going uh, have a knowledge score. So Google like documents which provide new knowledge about the topic. So try to find new new facts. Try to provide provide more facts that your competitors do. Not just reverse engineering. So. Uh, don't just try to uh, do what, what was done by top 10 results. Uh, use structured data, <coughs> post regularly and refresh content. As I told you before, Google uh, also have a score for content, uh, content refreshness. Uh, look broadly at the intention. So just don't, fo just don't focus on, uh, on page type, focus, on, uh, focus broadly on, on the intention. Don't focus on content land. Use short sentence and, uh, sentences and uh, keywords. Avoid uh, expressions your own opinion. As I told you before, by the P by Perpedia, Google can understand what is your opinion and what is fact. Google doesn't like opinions and Google likes facts. And be patient. Google needs time to understand your ontology and your ta the taxonomy. So it will took around two months from publishing first content to to have first visits, uh, and it can took about a year to create a high topical authority result. And the next part is the future of semantic SEO, as the future is user intent, and Google will focus on that more and more. And uh, we already know that Google plan to release a multitask uh, model, uh, which called Moom, uh, which can provide uh, various information for various type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, if, for example, Google, if you ask for, if you send a picture of these shoes and ask Google if these shoes will, uh, uh, if, you, if you go to, Fuji with these shows, Google can provide information from a text, from videos, from, from images and different kind of uh, documents and then uh, provide it to user. Google also have T5 NLP uh, model that is much more uh, powerful than GTP3, which everyone know. Uh, T5 have uh, 540 billion parameters. Right now, GTP3 have on, has only 175 billion parameters. So uh, T5, uh, T5 is much more powerful. And also you uh, see performance of T5 uh, on 58 tasks. And if we compare performance between Palm uh, 5 shot, uh, the performance is uh, av on average around 16 for GTP3 is around 15 right now. So it means that uh, Google have like better, better technology to understand the language and the, and the, and the content. It, it can also means that uh, automatic generated content will, uh, will, will not be able to be ranked high because T5 can recognize that. And for example, uh, T5 can be trained to many tasks, like example, uh, ex explaining a jokes. Uh, as you can see, here's a joke and T5 is able to explain that to the user. Okay, so uh, we finished with the, 
um, presentation. Now uh, we would like to show you how uh, we have deal with this uh, at Senuto with semantic SEO approach. Uh, and we create a <clears throat> content suite which uh, contain content planner. Uh, when you provide a URL and keyword and we can create a uh, architecture infrastructure for your website. Then we have a writer when you provide a topic and, and we can check if your uh, text is good for this for for this particular topic and we have also tracker which allow you to track the keywords the position of the keywords every day and now i show you uh, how it works but i need to change my screen for <clears throat> i need to share full screen by now mm, or one uh... because i have three Cards. Yeah, so okay. the whole screen. Okay, uh, I prepare uh, the plans before because it took around 20, 30 minutes to, to be done. But uh, first of all, I want to show you content planner. The content planner allow you to plan <clears throat> the content uh, uh, content plan for your website and also tell you how to organize the content uh, within the structure. So what we what we see here, we provide a keyword docs food. Uh, and uh, the sy system provide uh, plan for 840 articles <coughs> with 9,000 keywords. Uh, zero of them, uh, I, the, the domain I provide already have in top 10, zero of them have uh, in top 50. If we are on the position four for all the keywords, we will have around 1,300,000 uh, uh, session per month from, from that, that articles. And here we have uh, plans for specific articles. So here is an example uh, article plan for dog's food. And we also try to understand the user intent. So we know that in 30, 35% uh, of, uh, of the queries, the <clears throat> intent in trans is transactional. For some of the queries is local. For some of the queries is research and navigational also for some of the queries. And also we provide some information about, all, uh, about every article. So from that um, article about dog's food, we can generate around 68,000 sessions per month. Uh, there are 26 article, uh, 26 keywords in this cluster. <clears throat> Average position uh, for the domain in this cluster is uh, 100. So there is nothing uh, in 100 right now. And search volume for these keywords is uh, 118,000 per month. <clears throat> if I open the article, I will see uh, the keywords that I should use uh, to be ranked for this specific article. So if I want to rank for dog's food, I should create a page that will contain a keywords like dog's food, dog's food brands, uh, bully max food, uh, <coughs> pet, pet smarts, and there is 26 other keywords. For each keywords, we provide a position for the domain URL, Keyword search volume, estimated traffic from uh, from from the position that the domain have traffic potential and traffic to get, and also we provide a question that you should answer in your article to <clears throat> to, to provide Google. Um, uh, so if you want to rank for dog's food, you also uh, should answer for a question: What is the number one healthy dog food? What is the most expensive? And and so on and so on. There is few other questions that you should answer. We also provide SERP analysis for the particular keywords, but you should uh, click getting the data. And then after like two minutes, the uh, SERP analysis will show. <clears throat> and here you have article categories because like uh, we have planned for 800 articles and we try to understand how we should structure the articles in, in, our, in our service. So uh, for example, I don't know, um, for example, we have uh, raw dog food diet, and we have four articles in this category, and it which which means we should create these four articles. And if we plan the architecture, uh, uh, we if we plan the uh, architecture, we should uh, we should like for example uh, provide internal links between these four articles, <clears throat> and we have uh, around twenty clusters right here. Every cluster have uh, own uh, own articles. For example, this uh, dog food healthy have twenty articles, uh, three hundred forty six keywords, and also 
I should uh, I should organize them nearly in structure and also uh, and also provide internal links uh, between them. I clicked before the SERP analysis and it's done. So for every URL that is shown in top 10 for the keywords that I show in the previous tab, uh, we have average number of characters in the content. So average content length is 80,000 characters. Average number of headings two is six. Average number of headings three is 10. This is the best visible <clears throat> Uh, this is the best visible uh, URL about this topic and have uh, one keywords in top 10. This is the title of the URL. This is the meta description, number of characters. And also we provide you uh, headings for this. There is some problem right now, but internal links, external links, <clears throat> and you can analyze your competitors and see how you should write the content. If you create a plan about uh, dog's food, then you should write these articles and the content writer will help you about that. I also prepare uh, prepare uh, brief uh, before and I provide uh, <clears throat> keyword dog's food and here you have a keywords that you should use on your text. For example, if I provide keyword wet dog food, you can see that I already use one uh, of six that that is uh, uh, that I should. Also, you have you uh, you have here usage examples. For example, um, from this source, uh, the keywords was used in this sentence. So, if you write article, you should see how your competitors write about that. You you have also keywords that you should provide of headings. Mm, you, 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 you can also see how long this article should be. This one should be around 6,000 characters. You, you can also provide meta tags. Mm, you have also <coughs> SERP analysis right here. Every article have a content score, number of characters, internal links, headers, and so on. And the next step of the process, because this is the process, first you, con you plan the content, then you write the content, and then you track your keywords that you write about uh, the content. So you can create a project where you can provide the keywords and every day we'll track the position for each keyword for, uh, for, for your website. So uh, here is a various reports on that. Also the, the module have uh, integration with Google Data Studio. Uh, so you can create a, a ready to use data studio report for for uh, for tracking your content that senuto plan for you and content that you write in senuto writer and that's uh, that's all about the uh, all about the tool and we have a special uh, special offer for you Matty, you want to set Yes, we have a great news for you you can try senuto completely for free for the whole month the standard trial period is uh, 14 days, but uh, special for you, for the viewers of this webinar, we can extend it to one month. You just need to sign up on our website. You can go to senuto.com or uh, directly to senuto.to slash try to uh, sign up page. And then after you create your page, write to us on chat and provide us with your email that you uh, sign up your account with. You will, you will find chat on the right down corner on our website, on our app. Exactly. Always in the right uh, down corner, there is a chat icon. Or if you have any kind of problem with it, you can also write to us on Facebook. Uh, and then there, our customer success team is waiting for you. They will extend you uh, this trial and you can also ask them about anything about our app. Yeah, we have also can announce the next webinar, which will take place in three weeks from now. Yeah, exactly. Damon will tell, will tell you about uh, automation in SEO. Yeah, I will tell you about the automation in SEO, how to automate the proce processes in SEO. We'll also show you our integration with the Make.com app, which provide you integration with more than 1,000 apps. So you can uh, you can uh, automate mostly of your uh, SEO activities. <clears throat> and we'll also provide you ready-to-use base for automat uh, autom um, automations that we prepare before webinar.
But also you can subscribe our channel on YouTube. It's Senuto for the weekly tips about uh, SEO, but also on our Facebook, you can find a lot of our uh, articles on blog page or some small tips about SEO and how you can uh, grow your uh, website more. Yeah, we will also uh, publish article about semantic SEO in the future, near future, I think, <laughs> in the next month. Um, I write the article, 100 pages article about semantic SEO and everything that I tell you uh, today. <clears throat> there, uh, I, I write an article in detail, so we'll also provide you a link when it will be ready. Sticky in theoretical and practical uh, part, that's all. If you have any questions, you can ask us in the chat. Uh, and also you can like, if you're watching it after our webinar, you can also write this in the comments or Facebook or on YouTube. We will uh, ask, we will answer them all. Yeah. We just starting English speaking webinars, so there is <laughs> only a few people's right here, but I, I think we will have more in. Yeah, but thank you all for coming yeah. here. You are early, early adapters. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I think we have no questions, so. Yeah, exactly. So thank you all again for coming to our today's webinar and see you on our another, on an, our another's webinars and our videos. Thank you so much. Social media. Pleasure for me. Bye. Have you Bye. have a nice